Hello everyone and welcome to our next lesson. Just a reminder that I originally developed this course for the Bangtan Academy Discord community, so if you'd like to find out more, please follow them on Twitter at Bangtan Academy underscore so you can get access to other materials and make friends to study with. You can also find me on Twitter at writer underscore court or on the btseffect.com. Hello everyone, welcome to Learn Korean with BTS Chapter 10. We're going to get started on page 66 with the foods at the very top. So the first three at the top there, the first one is gyul, which is tangerine. The second one is sausage, sausage. And the third one is cake for cake. So that first exercise is going to ask you which one the BTS members did not buy. So you can scan the video to get that answer. So below that, we have some additional food words. First, we have dwejigogi, which is pork. Then takogi, which is chicken. Pa, which is green onion. Jiju, which is cheese. Sengseon, which is fish. Togogi, which is beef. Keran, for eggs. Manu, for garlic. Seu, for shrimp. And ojingo for squid. So you might recognize some of that if you've learned a few animals in Korean. You know dweji is pig and tak is chicken. So if you add kogi after it, then you get the meat form that you actually consume. Same thing with hogogi, that kogi is, you know, meat that you eat. For fish, it's a little bit different. You might have heard mulgogi, which literally is like saying water meat but that is not the fish that you eat. That's just fish in general. So fish that you actually eat is sengseon. And like I said, pa is a green onion. And if you want to refer to the regular like white onions, those are yang pa. So those are just some additional food words. Now we're going to move on to the key expression on page 68. This is nenge oteo form. So this is a type of conjugation, but it's a little bit easier than the conjugations we've been dealing with so far. So if you've heard oteo before, you might know that it means how is something. So in this format, we're going to use ninge oteo to attach to action verbs to ask what the listener thinks about doing something that the speaker suggests. So when a speaker suggests something, they can use Uri kachi blank nenge oteo and fill that blank in with a verb to suggest that you do something together. And then the listener can accept that suggestion or they can politely and indirectly decline it. You can also use this format just to make a suggestion in general. It doesn't have to be a suggestion that you do something together. It could just be that you're offering a suggestion to the listener. So to conjugate this, you're going to just add nun to the verb stem. So first you take off the ta off of the verb and just add nun. The ke oteo part will stay the same unless you need to change your level of politeness. So you can change oteo into ote for panmal, or if you need it to change into a different format, you can do that as well. But right now we're most commonly going to see oteo and ote. There is one note about irregular verbs in here, so of course the real irregular verbs are appearing again. So first we're going to take off the ta form, just like always in dictionary form, take off the ta, and then we're going to remove the real from the last syllable in the verb before conjugating. So the rule here is if a verb ends in real and it's followed by a verb ending that starts with nian, Piyup or shiot or a batim riol. You're going to remove the riol from the verb before you add your conjugation form. So they've given us the example of manterta to make. So if we want to conjugate into nenge oteo, we're going to take off the ta. We're left with mandel. So that ends in a riol. And because this form starts with a nian, because nen, we have to take off the riol. So then we're just left with man de. So you can see it's conjugated man de nin because we're just attaching that nin to the part um, that already exists before it after you take off that deal. So the only part left from the 
original verb is mandu, and then we just add nunge otteo. So again, that happens with burkoeo form as well, because that is a verb conjugation that has a ryul in the bachim. So that ul before koeo, because that ends in a ryul, and because manduda also ends in a ryul for mandu, we're going to remove the liu from mandu and then add liu koyo. So we've already covered that conjugation, of course, but it's relevant here because the liu irregular verbs do have a lot of different forms. So this it's just showing you again that that's why this is conjugated in that way. So it's not mandu koyo, it's just mandu koyo. Same thing with the useo form because it starts with a shiot. So we're going to have to take off the liul and we get yo instead of yo. And then again with samnida form, we get mandamnida because we take off the liul since it's meeting a piyup or a shiut. Actually, they're both consonants that make the liul go away. So it's not mandusamnida, it's mandamnida. So the conversation on this page, the first person says, Nan seng san hui moko shippo which means, as for me, I want to eat raw fish. And so we learned that fish that you eat is sengsan. Hui is just raw fish, so it's like sashimi in Japanese food, except in Korean it's hui, so sengsan hui. And then the second person responds, kure, mm, sanakjido shikinen ge otte, which means, sounds good, how about also ordering octopus? Sanakji is raw octopus, so this is them using that format of nenge oteo to suggest that they also order another type of food. So they're saying, how about also ordering this? So that's that nenge ote, how is this, and the this is ordering octopus. Moving on to the next page with conjugations. These are pretty easy. We really just need to watch out for the real irregular verbs. So the first example with chikta, we get because you just take off the ta and then you're left with the verb stem which is jik. Add nun to that verb stem and then ge oteo. So jignenge oteo. The example sentence, yogiyeso sajinu jignenge oteo, which means how about taking a picture here. The second one is kada. So even though one ends in a consonant, one ends in a vowel for verbs, it doesn't matter. They're both going to get nun. So again, take off ta, add nun. So we get kanenge otteo. The example sentence, uri misugane kanenge otteo, which means how about we go to the art museum? And then we have the ryul irregular verb. So mandu ta, take off ta. We have a ryul, so we want to remove that and then add nunge otteo. So mandenge otteo. The example sentence, hanguk irumul mandenge otteo which means how about making a Korean name. So the book also tells us how to accept or refuse this sort of suggestion. So if you want to agree with what the speaker says and accept the suggestion, you could say various different things. The examples that they give us are 좋아요, 그게 좋겠어요, and 좋은 생각이에요. So the first one is just like saying sure or that sounds good. The second one is also kind of like saying that sounds good or that would be good. We haven't learned this het form yet in style. So joketa is also kind of a future tense and it means a few it means a few things, but we'll come back to that later. But just for now, understand that as saying sort of like that would be good. And then the last one, chon senga kieo, means that's a good idea. And any of these you could change to be less formal, so you could just say choa or choan sengakia, depending upon who you're talking to. And then an indirect refusal would be mian heo, yaksok yisoyo, which means I'm sorry, I have another commitment. Yaksok is a promise, but can also mean commitment or you have some sort of appointment or something you have to do that you've already agreed to. And the reason you would use an indirect refusal is because in Korean, it's a lot more common and a lot more polite to refuse indirectly rather than just saying no. So oftentimes, especially 
if you're speaking to someone where you need to be more polite, you're not just going to flat out say no to many things. You're going to refuse kind of indirectly with some sort of excuse. Um, that's just how the language works. It's very common. So if you know someone really well, of course, you can say no to certain things, but you want to try to soften it a little bit. So instead of just saying no to the suggestion, they are saying that this is a better format. So mian heo yaksoki style. Moving on to the second key expression on page 70, this is just un, which is a modifying form. So this is used for descriptive verbs when we want to modify a noun. So if you think about it in terms of English, think about adjectives, because when we modify a noun in English, that's known as an adjective. But in Korean, we take our descriptive verbs and can modify our nouns that way. So if you want to modify a noun in Korean, you have to conjugate it this way. So we use un if the verb ends in a consonant and use just a nian if the verb ends in a vowel. And then for ita and opta, you use nun. So for example, if you want to say temi ita, you're going to say temi nun or temi opnun. So that you just add that nun on to eat or up, take off the ta, and that gives you the modifying form of any word that ends in ita or opta. So in the example conversation, they're talking about these large crabs that they're pointing to. So the first person says, wa, chogi kun ke do isa, which means over there, there's also a large crab because ke is crab. And then kun is how we get the modifying form of large. So our noun is ke, our modifier is kun. So in dictionary form, that's kuda. Take off the ta, we're just left with k. So since that ends in a vowel, just add the nian and we get kun. And then the second person responds, to kenen no ka, which means that crab is too large. Taome mokja. Let's eat that later or next time. So basically in context, it's because they're already getting other food. So this crab is too large for them to get right now. And I think the language pen actually translates that first sentence to that crab is too large for just the two of us, which that's kind of, you know, in context, what they're saying, like it's too big for us right now, you know, so we're not going to get it now. We're going to get it later. So it's a little bit of an interpretation there, but that sentence on its own just says that crab is too big. So for some examples on conjugation with takta, we take off the ta, it ends in a consonant, so we're going to add n. So then we get tagen, and if we want to use it to modify a noun, the example they've given us is pang, which is room. So tagen pang for small room. The second one is pisada, which is expensive, and so that ends in a vowel, so we just add the nian. So we get pisan. And then the example is pisan imshik for expensive food. And then next we have a hada verb, so yumyong hada, which is to be famous or to be popular. So that gets changed to yumyong han because ha ends in a vowel, so we add nian to get yumyong han. The example is yumyong han kwangwangji, which is like a popular or famous tourist attraction. So we have two irregular descriptive verbs here. The liu irregular descriptive verb is kilda which is to be long. So again, take off the ha, we're left with the ryo, which we want to remove for this conjugation. So we're going to take that off and add the nian because it now ends in a vowel. So it's not kirin, it's just kin. The example is kin mori, which is long hair. And then the next one is a piyup irregular verb. So for this, we're going to take off the ta and the piyup changes to u. So it changes to a vowel. So we get mugon because it now ends in a vowel, so we just add the nian. So the example is mugon kabang, or heavy bag. So now to put those together in the full conversation, we have the first person saying uri mo mogurka, which means what should we eat? The second person says nan seng san hue mokko shippo, which means I want to eat raw fish. Also, there's a contraction there. I think I forgot to mention that the first time around, but nan is just short for nanin. Then the first person responds, 그래, 음, 산낙지도 시키는 게 어때? So, sounds good. How about ordering raw octopus too? And the second person responds, 좋은 생각이야, which means that's a good idea. 
first person again says, "Wa togi kunge doiso," which means, "Wow, there's also a large crab over there." And the second person responds, "Tokenen nomu ka," which means the crab is too large. Taume mokja. Let's eat that next time. So I'll read that one more time all the way through. Uri mo mogurka, nan sengsan hue moko shippa. Kure, mmm, sanak jido shiki nenge otte, jon sengagia. Wa, togi kunge do iso. Tokenen nomu ko, taume mokja. So there's also a second conversation I'll just go over briefly on page 73 at the bottom. So this is one you're supposed to listen and read aloud. So definitely go back later with your language pen and do that. So the first person says, 우리 소고기 살까? Which means, should we buy beef? The second person says, 누나, 맛있는 돼지고기도 사는 게 어때요? Which means, 누나, how about also buying delicious pork? And the third person says, 신선한 채소도 사는 게 어때? Which means, how about also buying fresh vegetables? And the first person responds, 그래, 오늘 고기 파티 하자. Which if you directly translate that, it's like saying, sure, let's have a meat party today, which is a little weird, but the language pen translates that as barbecue party, which makes more sense. So I know it just says kogi, but kind of think of that like barbecue party instead of just meat party, because that's weird <laughs> English. But yeah, that's the second conversation. Um, and that's it for chapter 10. So I will see you in the next one.